Master Windu. How pleasant of you to join us. This party's over. What is up guys and welcome back to another video. I am the Twisted Jedi and today we are talking about one of Star Wars' most badass characters, Mace Windu. Mace Windu is best known for being played by Samuel L. Jackson in the prequel movies, however there are some things most people don't know about his character. This video today will discuss the top 10 things you didn't know about Mace Windu. Before we get into the countdown, if you want more Star Wars or geek and gamer related content, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Jumping into the countdown, number 10, Shatter Points. One of the coolest things about Mace Windu that sets him apart from all other Jedi is his ability to see Shatter Points in the Force. As described by Mace Windu himself, he states, when I look at you through the force, I see where you break. Now, if you don't know what they are, shatter points allow people to briefly sense a momentary weakness and influence it to their own will. One example of this is in the Revenge of the Sith movie, when Mace Windu is holding off Palpatine's force lightning and Anakin walks in the room. He sees the immediate shatter point of the Sith, which ultimately leads to him being thrown out the window and his death. Moving on to number 9, his violet lightsaber. Now we've only seen one Jedi to date with a violet bladed lightsaber, and that is Mace Windu. His original story states that he acquired the unique crystal for his lightsaber at the age of 14 when he travelled to the planet of Hurricane. The indigenous people that were settled there attacked him at first, and after shattering one of their tribesmen, Mace actually used the force to reconstruct him. And after seeing that, the tribe presented him with his crystal that has since become ever so famous and mysterious. I know more people want to see purple coloured lightsabers, I do to, but unfortunately it's probably not gonna happen. Moving on to number 8, Yoda gave him his name as Mace Windu, born on the planet of Huron Kal to an indigenous tribe, the Gosh Windu. His parents had died not long after his birth when he was 6 months old. Windu was then taken to the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. Not only was Yoda essentially Mace Windu's parental guardian, as he is pretty much to all of the Jedi younglings, but he was also originally the one that gave him his name. Moving on to number 7, his attempted assassination. In late season 2 of the Clone Wars series, we see a young Boba Fett attempting to assassinate Jedi Master Mace Windu. After laying the trap for Windu, Boba blends in among the other young clone cadets. Right as Mace is about to enter his quarters and fall into the trap, he receives word from Anakin that he needs his help, and has his clone trooper place his belongings in his room, which then sets off the bomb that was meant for Windu, killing the trooper instead. Number 6, and for all of you that know General Grievous, his famous cough was caused by Mace Windu. In an episode of the Clone Wars series, we see General Grievous abducting the Chancellor and taking him onto his shuttle. As they board the ship, he turns around to see Mace Windu advancing towards him. Grievous prepares for a lightsaber duel, however, instead of immediately engaging in combat, Mace force crushes his chest in. It's definitely one of the finest displays of Mace's true power, and this huge blow to the chest makes Grievous drop to his knees, and is technically the first time we hear the cough in the storyline. This cough makes General Grievous super, super recognisable in the Star Wars universe, and not many people know that it was originally caused by Mace Windu. Moving on to number 5, Mace Windu formed his own lightsaber combat form. Mace Windu developed a lightsaber style based upon Form 7. The style used quick and deadly strikes to overcome the enemy. Windu created this style with aid from Sora Bulk, although Windu and his former apprentice were considered to be the form's only masters. This form was looked down upon by most Jedi as it was rumoured to lead the user uncomfortably close to the dark side. Moving on to number 4, Mace Windu survives being stabbed through the gut by his apprentice. In the novel Shatterpoint, Mace Windu returns to his home planet of Harun Kal. He had previously received word that his former apprentice had fallen to the dark side. Mace travelled to the planet and found her playing dead to catch him by surprise. When he fell for it, she attacked and the two of them fought. During the fight, we see how tough Mace Windu really is as she put her lightsaber handle up to his gut and ignited it, sending the blade through his torso and out his back. Like a boss, Mace Windu instinctively grabs her hand and kept her from removing the lightsaber, keeping him alive. Which almost seems ridiculous, but I guess anything is possible in Star Wars. Now I know what you're all thinking, if only Qui-Gon had thought the same thing, when Darth Maul had stabbed him through the gut, he'd still be there today. But unfortunately, that's just the way things go. Getting into top 3, we lead things off with Mace Windu knowing about the clone army and keeping it a secret. Now in an episode of The Clone Wars, Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi had reported to the High Council that they had discovered it was not Cypher Diaz, but in fact actually Count Dooku who ordered the creation of the clone army. This revelation came as a disturbing shock to the Council, as their enemy had created an army for them. They immediately decided that this fact needs to be covered up and must not be known outside the Jedi Council. They believed that not only would this create chaos, but also deep mistrust in the Jedi Order. Pressing on to number 2, Samuel L. Jackson's special requests for his character. Samuel L. Jackson had only two requests when it came to playing Mace Windu in the original trilogy movies. The first request was pretty subtle. Sam Jackson requested that BMF be engraved onto his lightsaber handle, which stands for Badass Mother 
you get where I'm going. His second request went straight to the top. After seeing the pre-screening of the Battle of Geonosis, Samuel asked George Lucas to have his lightsaber color be purple so that he could easily spot himself among the large number of Jedi and stand out from the crowd. Although at first he did not want to do this, eventually Lucas agreed and made the change, giving Mace Windu his famous violet-bladed lightsaber. And finally, number one, could we see a Mace Windu return? One of the coolest surprises at Star Wars Celebration in Orlando this year was a video message from the man who played Mace Windu himself, Samuel L. Jackson. While the clip started as an apology for his absence, he also had a message for Lucasfilm. Hey everybody, sorry I couldn't make it, but busy as usual, but I just want to say it's been a real honor and privilege to be a part of the Star Wars community. Thanks George for giving me that opportunity and letting me ride it out through at least three episodes. Wish I could be there so I could sign everything you brought for me to sign and to just say hey to everybody in person. And uh, while you're all sitting there, I know you're all in my corner on this, we know Jedi's can fall from incredible heights and survive. So apparently, I am not dead. Yes, I have two appendages right now, but we know the long and rich history of Star Wars characters reappearing with new appendages and being stronger and better than they ever were. Mace Windu is awaiting his return. Let's make it happen. Kathy, you're sitting right there. I know you know what to do. All you gotta do is say the word. See you soon. On screen, I hope. Jackson went on to say that throughout the history of Star Wars, it has been fairly common for Jedi to survive long falls. His point was that he wants to see Mace Windu rise again. In his opinion, with the recent insurgence of Star Wars films, including spin-offs and origin movies, this would be the best and possibly last opportunity for Samuel L. Jackson to reprise his role as a much-loved Jedi Master. And personally, I couldn't agree more. I'd love to see Mace Windu return, and I think it would be really, really good for the Star Wars universe. A lot of people were disappointed when he was thrown out of the building. However, I've always had a sneaking suspicion that he may have survived that. So, it'll be interesting to see if we do get a Mace Windu return, and I would definitely be hyped for that. If you like this countdown, guys, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content. And remember to enter my giveaway Away, I will leave details down in the description. As always guys, thanks for watching. I am the Twisted Jedi and may the Force be with you.